Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a sum with powers of i. We've done some powers of i before and we're going to be doing more later but this one is kind of like a nice one and is an integer by the way and we're supposed to simplify i to the power 3n plus i to the power 3n plus 1 plus i to the power 3n plus 2. So these are consecutive powers of i. What, what difference does 3n make? So let's talk about a variation of this problem and then we'll get to the 3n thing, okay? What would happen instead of 3n if you had 4n? i to the power 4n plus i to the power 4n plus 1 plus i to the power 4n plus 2. Now one thing to keep in mind is i squared, in case you didn't know or you haven't seen the lecture videos, i squared is always negative 1. So we're defining a special number so we can solve some equations that we couldn't solve um, with, our, with the tools that we had. We just invented a number whose square equals negative 1 and then we can solve some equations with them. And lots of uh, awesome things can be done. It's not just sort of for solving equations obviously. But since i squared is equal to negative 1 and i is just i, you can also call that square root of negative 1, but that's kind of ambiguous because negative 1 has two square roots in the complex world, i and negative i, okay? So i cubed would be i squared times i, as you should know, and i squared is negative 1, so this would be negative i. If you hear any sounds, that's the cats going crazy. I'm sorry about that. This is their time. I to the fourth is just I squared times I squared, and that is negative one squared, which is positive one. So those are consecutive powers of I. And with this one, with the 4n, we would have the following. Since 4n is a multiple of four, we could basically write this as I to the power four to the power n, and that will be one as long as n is an integer, right? And n is an integer in this case, of course. So this will give us a one, but this would just be one times I, so let's go ahead and rewrite it. We can basically write this as 4n times i and then i to the 4n times i squared. And then you can pull out an i to the 4n, just factor it out, 1 plus i plus i squared. And then since i to the fourth is 1, this is going to be a 1 and is f, n is an integer. i squared is negative 1. These are going to cancel out. And guess what? You're going to end up with i. So this sum would be i if n is an integer and you have this type of sum. So do you think this is going to be i as well? No, because 3 and 4 are different numbers. And what's really critical about the 3? It's relatively prime to 4. So it's going to be a different story. Let's see what that looks like. So we have i to the power 3n plus i to the power 3n plus 1 plus i to the power 3n plus 2. First of all, we can kind of explore what this is going to look like for certain values of n. For example, what happens if n is equal to 0? 0 is an integer, right? Yes. i to the 0, i to the 1, plus i squared. i squared is negative 1, i to the 0 is 1, so these two are going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with i. Great. What if n equals 1? Then we're going to get i to the power 3 plus i to the power 4 plus i to the power 5. Now, this is negative i, this is i, actually not i, that's i to the power 0, or just 1. This is 1, and this is i i is going to cancel out this time, and this is going to give us a 1. Hmm, interesting. And then if n is equal to 2, we would get a i to the power 6 plus i to the power 7 plus, wait a minute, am I doing it right? Yeah, I think so. i to the 8, because those are multiples of 3. And then i to the 6 is going to be the same as i squared. Notice that we're throwing away the, the fourth uh, or multiples of 4. This is going to be i squared. This is going to be i cubed, and this is going to be uh, i to the fourth or just 1. This is going to be negative 1, negative i, and positive 1. And this time we're going to end up with negative i. Hmm. It's pretty interesting. Every time we're getting a different answer. So there's no definite answer for this. Let's test n equals 3. So we're going to get i to the 9, i to the 10, i to the 11. By the way, one of the things you can do is you can pull out an i to the 9 and write this as 1 plus i plus i squared. And i squared and 1 is always going to cancel out. So basically it's i to the 10th i to the 10th is i squared, so this is going to be negative 1. Hmm. Looks like we cycle through all versions, i1, negative i, and negative 1, right? So what does that mean? So let's take a look. It means that we don't have a constant answer, constant value for this sum. 
It depends. Because again, 3n is not a multiple of 4. So let's go ahead and do the same strategy. Take out i to the 3n. You get 1 plus i plus i squared. We could have done this, but I just wanted you to explore a little bit with different powers, specific examples, to kind of get a feel. Now, i squared is always, always negative 1, right? So these two are always going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with i inside and i to the 3n. So it's going to be i to the 3n times i to the first. And this is going to be i to the power 3n plus 1. That's why you got different values, because the value actually depends on the value of n. If n is a multiple of 3, multiple of 3 plus 1, multiple of 3 plus 2. So basically, you're looking at uh, mod 3, but mod 4. Anyways, I don't know what I'm talking about. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.